Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and we're reporting from the NFB World Congress 2017 which is taking place here in San Jose in California. And I'm talking with Patrick Lopez, VP of Networks Innovation at Telefonica. Patrick, thanks for talking to us. Good to see you again. Likewise. Thanks, Martin. Let's start like this. What do you think vendors have to do to convince CSPs like Telefonica that the transformation process and journey is worth the pain that comes with it? It's a very hard uh, thing to do. Um, uh, vendors um, now have gone through part of that pain themselves. Uh, they have had to retool and their journey is not over. Uh, certainly operators are looking at it and understanding um, that it is um, strong medicine. <laughs> uh, I believe th th that's the case. Um, I believe as well that uh, operators don't truly really need convincing. Uh, it's more a matter of what is going to be um, the event horizon that is going to spur the industry to accelerate their investment. Um, it's also a matter of scale. I think uh, a lot of network operators uh, feel that they ought to be doing more in this area and to transform. But certainly that transformation, I think many understand now that it's not just a technological transformation. Um, it goes to the core uh, of the company itself. Sure. It's transforming uh, the processes, the way uh, people uh, deploy and manage uh, the technology. It's transforming the people themselves. It's uh, a lot of retooling. It's transitioning from a model where you have a lot of um, uh, uh, engineers, uh, telecom engineers, to a model that is more IT oriented. Uh, and at last, and I think that's the key part of the problem, uh, in order to really uh, draw the fruits of virtualization, um, you have to perform that transformation. You cannot just buy that technology off the shelf like you've been buying uh, technology uh, until now, uh, just like you're buying boxes and sure. paying a vendor, a large vendor, to integrate and operate it for you. Because if you do that as a network operator, you don't really get the benefits of that uh, uh, industrialization process. So th it's a complex uh, problem in the sense that the network operator that embarks on that journey understand that maybe there are a few short-term uh, benefits um, in transitioning in that model uh, to change the, the capex allocation uh, and to go to a separation of hardware and software. But the long-term benefits come from a change of the DNA of the company itself changing the processes and the people in order to be able to program the network and to provide a better user experience. So that's not either something that every network operator uh, is likely to be able to do uh, hmm. at the same time as running their business. Um, so there is a scale element there that matters, I think. Good point. Is it really, do you think, Patrick, you know, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger? Well, it is a, it is a fight for survival. I think we, we cannot, um, we cannot uh, kid ourselves. Um, I have a personal opinion that um, the services of voice, data, messaging as we know them today um, will have very little value in the future. Not that they won't have value, it's just that our customers won't value them as much mm. because they become table stake. Yeah. Everybody has them and at the end of the day, if as an operator you do not provide the same level of quality of service as your competitors, well, they will change, they will churn. Uh, the, the real differentiators is the ability to provide an experience that is unique for your customers and for enterprise. And in order to do that, certainly having a virtualized network and having some level of automation goes a long way. But the ability to operate a, such a network requires you organizationally to have the ability to program that network Indeed. and to have the ability to operate that network yourself. And I think a lot of network operators have, uh, you know, gone into the managed network uh, model uh, 
uh, over the last few years. And now we are at the swing, swing of the pendulum where um, they have been, the industry has been asking for virtualization and SDN in order to reduce the cost, in order to improve the flexibility, but the cost to be able to draw those benefits is that the operator themselves have to take charge and to be able to do a lot of this themselves. And I think that our industry and network operators have been relying too much on vendors um, and it's been a fairly comfortable uh, position to just, you know, tell this big vendor, okay, we have this big project, you're going to do it all for us. And we're going to pay you, but you're going to take care of everything for us and basically we'll call you if we have a problem. <laughs> um, and I think uh, it was a fairly naive um, uh, strategy. And going forward, um, because connectivity in itself is not necessarily a service that will draw a lot of revenues, and the differentiators are going to come from the service that are built on top of that com uh, connectivity, those operators that want to have a part of that uh, revenue, they will have to work hard. Uh, they will have to work hard and they will have to have the right resources to be able to change the experience, to change the program, the network. And that's not going to be possible with a managed network where you buy, where you call a system integrator to make a change request that calls one of these supplier to do something and then you have to test it for six months and then you have to uh, deploy it and then you have to retest it for another six months and by the time you actually deploy something, well, you can't deploy any new service unless you have an addressable market of at least 20 million subscriber and a year or year and a half timetable yeah. to deploy it. And that's just not going to cut it in a cloud uh, era. Mm. And that's it at the end of the day. So it is fight for survival. Thank you. Good answer. Let's move on. We know in this business, Patrick, that we live by acronyms Indeed. and initials and so on. And every year, and in fact, every few months, something new bobs to the surface of the apple barrel for a while and then disappears again very often. Um, Cloud native seems to be the buzz phrase of the moment. What do you think that means in terms of the CSPs, as Telefonica, and the vendors we've just been talking about? Um, being cloud native uh, means uh, having designed, engineered uh, a network function or service, a product, to be run on the cloud from day one. Um, cloud native, I think, has appeared as uh, a way to compare um, maybe younger startups that have emerged over the last few years on the tail of the SDN and NFV uh, network implementations. Compare them to traditional vendors. Mm. Traditional vendors that have a large install base of physical products, physical appliances, and the path for virtualization for them is probably much harder in the sense that from an economical standpoint, they have to protect the sunk investment and the deployments that they have. They have to offer operators like us an evolution path. Um, and the simplest way to do that for them is not to re-engineer uh, an Evolve Packet Core, a GGSN, uh, a AAA engine from scratch for a cloud-based architecture, but to take what they have, to take the software that they have that is intermingled very uh, uh, monolithically with their hardware and port it into a virtualization layer. And that's not cloud native uh, because you still end up with a monolithic platform that is still a black box, that still need very specialized skill set to deploy, operate, and maintain mm. over time. So it's understandably a progress, a first step, uh, but it doesn't deliver on the promise of what SDN and NFV uh, brings to the market. The second step beyond that virtualization is actually providing a high performance version of that uh, implementation and in many cases uh, vendors find that in order to provide 
performance that are close to the appliance model, they have to make a lot of compromises. Compromises using DPDK, SRIOV technology that tie the virtualized environment to the physical environment so that you can bypass the virtualization layer um, that achieve good performance, but the sacrifice you make is in portability and elasticity in the sense that your software becomes linked to the hardware and even if that hardware is nondescript, um, you lose the ability to take that workload and move it around the cloud as you need and to scale it up and scale it down in an efficient manner. Uh, so that compromise uh, goes against the target that we have as an industry for virtualization. Mm. And, and, and that's where the cloud nativeness, <laughs> if I might coin <laughs> uh, barbarism, uh, <laughs> is, um, is, is emerging. You have a number of vendors that have created products and solutions that have been designed for a cloud environment where uh, the control state um, and uh, the data states are separate where um, they don't necessarily take an evolved packet core product as a monolithic engine, but as a suite of microservices components that can be scaled independently and placed independently. Um, and and that's, that's what being cloud native means. And I think that that's, where, that's the big step that traditional vendors have to contemplate now, understanding that they proved that they can virtualize some of their products but they are not able to match either the performance or the portability or the scalability or the elasticity of cloud native uh, vendors. Uh, will they step up and will they redesign their product to be cloud native? Uh, I think that's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, maybe it's impossible and maybe it's easier for them to buy those cloud native vendors. And we're start, certainly starting to see that going, uh, happening. Interesting. Patrick Lopez, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.